Hi everyone and welcome to this quick overview of precast elements in Revit 2018.1. So before we actually go into the tools themselves, let's just take a, a minute to discuss the workflows. So in an earlier stage of a project, we might not be fully decided whether we're going to use in situ concrete and actually um, cast the concrete with formwork, um, fitted uh, rebar, loose rebar, that sort of thing, or we're going to utilize precast elements. Now, one of the things is, you can see here that I've just got um, standard Revit walls and floors. And at any point we like, we can go to the precast tab and we can start to split and subdivide these walls down into precast panels. Now, of course, in many projects, precast panels are um, quite uh, preferred because the speed of construction is much, much quicker. You know, we haven't got to wait for concrete to cure. Um, everything is kind of controlled in a nice factory environment. And actually, as you'll notice here as well, we do have CNC output as well or cam um, output so we can send this information directly to automated machine tools to manufacture the panels so let's just take a, a, a quick look at the functionality here I'm going to start by going into the configuration tools now of course when you just click on split Revit is going to start to break these walls down into sub components but how does it do that well Obviously, we wouldn't want a panel, perhaps, that was 30 metres long. Uh, equally, we might not want something that's 80 tonnes to lift. So what we can do here, for example, if we select the segmentation tab here, you can see that we can de determine the minimum wall lengths, maximum wall lengths, maximum wall heights, as well as things like the maximum weight of the panel. So this will obviously help us um, or help Revit uh, create uh, precast panels that can be transported and it can also be lifted as well and of course we can do a very similar thing for our floor slabs you'll notice on the floor slabs here we have solid slabs or hollow core slabs and then we can also do our own custom families as well so this is built-in parts um, and in here you can see that um, just for this example I've created an electrical back box and channel and obviously I want that precast in with the wall panels there and I want that to be dimensioned and integrated with the um, fabrication drawings that you'll see uh, me create a bit later on. And then down here we can also con uh, control and set up our cam export tools as well. So let's go ahead and see what Revit makes of this wall here. So we'll select this, we'll go to the precast tab and we'll choose split. Now, obviously you can choose more than one wall. You can split all of them in one go. Um, but it's quite nice to do, do them um, in groups so it doesn't take too long for the software to calculate. Okay, so you can now see that Revit's completed the task and actually segmented all of those walls there. I'm just going to do one more for you as well. So we'll go ahead and click this angled wall. Now, obviously Revit can um, split walls such as this, but it couldn't split curved walls. So the elements do have to be planar um, at the minute. Okay, and now Revit's finalised the uh, division of this wall as well. So, what's it done? Well, it's actually utilising standard Autodesk Revit assemblies. So, these are parts, yeah, and the parts have actually been generated into assemblies. So, consequently, all of the naming and numbering has been taken care of. Now, obviously, I can come through and I can rename and renumber these assemblies if required, and I'll show you a little bit of that um, shortly. Before we go on too much further, let's also see if we can split the floor down as well. Now, what I want to do here is uh, create these out of hollow core planks, but I don't want a plank that's going to be the full length of the slab. So what we can do, rather than just let the software go ahead and split it down as it sees fit, we can actually give it some sort of guidance. So what I'm going to do here is go into level one. And what I want to do is I want to pre-split um, pre this floor slab on grids B and C. So we can go to divided parts. Um, intersecting references and I can go into grids and choose B and C and just get Revit to uh, go ahead and split those there they are and then I can pick the panels so let's go ahead and do that go to the precast tab choose split So now I could actually uh, select the panel in here, go to the precast tab and choose split. And Revit will now break this down into precast planks. Okay, so you can now see that Revit's finalized the um, division of that floor there. So we'll just go ahead and quickly do the other ones. Okay, so there are our panels split. 
Okay. Right, let's now start to have a look at some reinforcement here. Now, before I put the reinforcement in, I just want to show you what would happen if I actually added in my own custom components. So I've created a family here for a, uh, an electrical uh, back box and channel that I want cast into the wall. Um, I'm going to put this on the exterior just so you can actually see this easily here. So you can see I can place place that out here. And again, just to remind you of this, if I go back into my um, precast tools, in here and we go to configuration and we go down to um, built-in parts here you can see that I can actually determine the type of parts that I want to um, have the precast uh, configuration recognizing and if I also go to dimension in here I can determine how that's going to be detailed and dimensioned as well okay so there it is so let's go ahead and now put some reinforcement into here now again I can um, set up the reinforcement in here so if we go back to our uh, reinforcement for our wall so here I'm going to use two layers of rebar this is going to be the internal or inside this is the outside or external here we can put in some covers in here so let's just go ahead and set the covers up um, also we can determine uh, what type of configuration it will use for corner bars and so on let's go for something like that um, okay and we'll now go ahead and reinforce. Yep, so now Revit's generated all the reinforcement bar in there. And you can now see the bars generated and added into the, the model, as you can see here. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, and view that in solid. So just like standard Revit, you can select all the rebar in the model there. And we can then view that as um, unobscured and as a solid. So, and there's all of our uh, reinforcement bar. Now, you can see it won't actually put all the trimming bars around structural openings as of yet, but I'm sure Autodesk are working on that for future releases of this software. So, one of the most powerful aspects of the software is producing all of our drawings. So, if we go back and select this single panel, obviously we could select multiple panels, but I'm just going to create a drawing of one panel here. We can click Shop Drawings. And now Revit will automatically lay the views out onto a drawing sheet. It will put all of the bar bending schedules and other in, uh, useful information onto the drawing sheet. And here we are. You can see this is now done. Um, here's my bar bending schedule. Now, if I want, if I really did want all of this onto one sheet, I could probably jig, jig that around to get it all to fit. But I'm going to put that probably on another sheet. Um, obviously, all these views, you can manipulate and move um, to, to whatever you like here. So we get a nice kind of isometric view and then plane section and elevation on the wall as well, as well as some key information about the object. So you can see here that we have a bit of quantities of all the components that are cast into that wall. So we have our lifters, our kind of side connecting nooses and so on. And of course, right down here, it will count up how many of these panels in the project are the same. And then, of course, the actual segment weight as well. Now you can see here that the name of this is just Solid Wall 13 at the minute. Well, obviously I can change that. I could call this um, Precast Panel Wall 001 or something like that. So you, you can name these um, quite easily if you want to. And again there, I could obviously rename the assembly to suit. Now, if you wanted to do something a bit more clever than this, you could perhaps use Dynamo or something to, to rename these um, based on the wall mark if you wanted to. Another little thing to recognise here, of course, is we have our centre of gravity as well, which is quite good. Now, once we've got all of this, we could actually then do an export out to um, CAM software in here. So you can see we've got Unicam here, which, um, which is a file format we could use. And of course, we can just generate that, uh, that information from there and obviously send that out for automation and manufacture. OK, good. So I hope that's been uh, a, a useful introduction to you. I urge you to um, take a look at this if, if you're interested in the precast module and see how you get along with it. But it's, it's relatively straightforward to use. OK, speak to you soon. Take care. Bye bye.